towards hell with every decision they make, with every word they utter, mm -hmm. and that the consequences are actually of import. And it doesn't small, matter who you are. Small is huge. Yeah, small. Well, small is, small is, small is what you have first of all, and it's not as small as it looks. Mm -hmm. So it's not anywhere near as small as it looks. <clears throat> in, in fact, so you have plenty in front of you to contend with, plenty of potential, and it actually is important that you contend with it. Not just for you, although it's important for you because it gives your life dignity and purpose mm -hmm. and meaning, and stops you from being bitter and resentful and hateful and murderous and genocidal and all of those terrible things that go along with resentment yeah. it's that but it also has your life properly conducted has a genuinely wide-ranging beneficial effect on everything around you so and i believe that to be nothing more than the literal truth well nothing more it is more because it's also the metaphorical truth mm -hmm. but I, I believe you can just lay that out as a statement of fact it's like the world is a lesser place without you fully committing yourself to its improvement. Mm -hmm. And I think people know that. So once it's articulated and the people come up to me and it's more and more women all the time and older people now too, the mm. demographic is starting to switch, but people come up to me all the time and they say, look, I like, I already knew the things that you were saying. I knew them deep in my heart, let's say, because they're archetypal truths. For, yeah, but, right. but having them articulated really helped me move forward with them. Like, yeah, and you're you're inspiring people to not be afraid to speak the truth in their context. I think that's yes. part of the reason. Well, why I'm also is I'm also inspiring them to be afraid of not speaking the truth in their right. context, right? Because you know it's very frequently the case, and this is why I decided to to make my original videos decrying Bill C-16 and the compelled speech legislation mm -hmm. in Canada. It's like it isn't like speaking up is without risk, and the risk is immediate and tangible, tangible, mm -hmm. but not speaking up man you want to do something risky like right. that's exactly risky right. it's just that it kills you you take a little bit of arsenic every day and mm -hmm. die of the po cumulative poison mm -hmm. in 30 years while you suffer the entire time it's like that's just not an improvement and mm -hmm. so hiding your your light under a bushel is a very very bad idea mm -hmm. and so no matter how you afraid you are of standing up for yourself and speaking out you should be far more afraid of the alternative your book opens up with um, reference to PTSD, and it really made me think about soldiers coming back, and uh, you mentioned the Melee Massacre with Lieutenant Callan, who just went on, he and his Marine, if you don't know the, the Melee Massacre story, it's a terrifying example of what human beings in their fallenness are able to do under the, the, the horrible impulse of, of mob think, right? Just a killing frenzy. None of them were armed and so on. And you point out that, that post-traumatic stress disorder is, um, I don't want to mangle yeah. it here, as much or more the realization of what you're capable of. Not oh, it's very just evil that, you, that can oh, no, fall you passive, very but you that. can actually oh, yes, do. It's very, very frequently that. It's not always that, because mm -hmm. now and then you encounter someone who is, almost always when you're dealing with someone with post-traumatic stress disorder, they have been touched by malevolence. There's yeah. no other way of, of, terming, of terming it. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's another person, especially if, if the recipient is naive. Mm -hmm. That's a right. bad combination. Naive pe person encounters malevolence. It's like that's post-traumatic stress disorder. But naive person observes themselves doing something terrible and then cannot live with it, mm -hmm. can, cannot fathom it. That's post-traumatic stress disorder. And I've had a large number of former soldiers come up to me personally and write to me in the last year saying that they're watching my lectures has really helped with their PTSD because I provide them with a philosophy of good and evil. Mm -hmm. And if you have PTSD and because you've been touched by malevolence in one way or another, you need to reorganize your thinking along lines that are fundamentally religious. You need to start seeing the world as a battleground between good and evil, which mm -hmm. is what it is in, in, in the most real sense. I, and I that's Solzhenitsyn's that. insight, right? That the battle, it, the battle lines are drawn in the human heart. Well, his, his insight is that that battle between good and evil is real, but that the most important battleground is the psychological, right? And, and that's, that's a direct extension of, I would say, New Testament theology, right? Mm -hmm. Is that the best, your best bet is to constrain the evil in your own heart, right? Rather than to concern yourself with the transgressions of your neighbor. Mm -hmm. You have plenty of malevolence to contend with.